You're probably familiar with only two types of mammals. We've got the marsupials, who have pouches or flaps to raise their offspring. Think like a kangaroo or a hypsoprimnodon moschitus, the musky rat kangaroo. Then we got the placentals, who have an organ named, you guessed it, the placenta to complete embryo development. Think dogs, cats, Ryan Seacrest. However, around 160 million years ago, there were mammals that refused to evolve the whole live pregnancy thing and decided that was disgusting, painful, and risky for no reason. This might be a bit progressive, but I think that laying eggs might actually be the better way to have birth. And fuck the nipples. I hate nipples. Anti-nipple gang, rise up. The nightmare blunt rotation of animals called monotremes decided to remain primitive, and as a result, they have a whopping five species alive today. You could fit an entire order of mammals into a Kia Soul. But it was 110 million years ago when the king, the ruler, the heroic secret agent would take its first steps on Earth. Sorry, Australia. Big difference when it comes to animals. Another one? The platypus is genuinely just a strange animal. It's like a mixture of a bunch of unrelated animals just got smushed into one. And it's not just me that thinks that, because the first European scientist to ever see this animal thought somebody was pranking them. Is it? The duck bill that looks super glued on? Or perhaps the flabby tail in the back? Or maybe the way it's sitting on the water looking like a floor mat? Why do you think life is all sunshine and rainbows? Spoiler alert, it's not! Let me fully break down the anatomy of a platypus. We've got the bill, which has two nostrils way in the front of it. Then we've got the eye. Oh, and turns out those marks are the ears. Wait, how'd you know he cheated on her? I heard it with my own two eyes. Then we've got the short brown fur, you know like a damn floor mat. And how about those web feet? The hind ones are used for steering in the water and my goodness, the front ones, the paddlers, the powerhouses. You gotta pay to see feet pics like these. Also, males have a spike on their ankle, but we'll talk about that later. And lastly, we've got the flat tail, which stores a bunch of fat in it to save energy and stabilize while swimming. Now, if we go all the way back to the duck-shaped bill, there's a couple of strange features that make the platypus stand out. To start, platypus are born with a few teeth that they lose while growing up, sort of like humans with baby teeth. However, instead of growing the teeth back, they develop plates that are used to mush up foods. Just imagine a human with 100% gum. Now with a diet of insects and worms, this might be acceptable. Unfortunately, they also happen to feed on small fish and crayfish, which are quite a bit harder to mash up. But these fishes and crayfish are found next to mud and gravel, so the platypus will scoop up its food, resurface on the land, and then gargle its catch with the bits of gravel it collected along the way. For the platypus, the rocks serve as makeshift teeth, which help to grind up the food and make it easier to swallow. And I know what you're thinking, what do they do with all the rocks in their mouth? By the way, monotremes don't have stomachs, so the platypus esophagus connects directly to the intestines. They are literally shitting out rocks. Oh, and by the way, the name monotreme means one hole, so the platypus shits, pisses, and does the deed all in one place. So, how was it? Honestly, kinda shitty. Damn, you seem pissed off. Dude, I got pissed on. Friendly reminder that these things coexisted with T-Rexes. Anyways, on the topic of butt sex, let's talk about how platypuses create the next generation. To begin, male and female platypuses avoid each other at all costs. Unless, it's time to tug the pug. They're pretty much in a shallow marriage. But to get to the female, it's time to fight. Male platypuses have evolved a very unique trait to fight one another. Remember the spike on their hind legs? Well, these things can sting. And boy, oh boy, do they hurt. If you were to be stung by a platypus, you'd have an excruciating pain that feels like hundreds of hornet stings, that spreads to your whole body, that lasts for weeks, that can't be alleviated by morphine, meaning it's almost as bad as a paper cut. After tussling around a bit, one male will emerge victorious and will court the female. The male will bite on the female's tail, and if she's comfortable, she'll bite the male's tail back and swim in circles with it. Aw, and it looks like we've got a match. How the fuck is everyone winning but me? Females will then dig a burrow, and after 21 days of gestation, lay around two eggs. As for the male, they're out there with the hardest job of them all, being a deadbeat dad. Within 10 days, the puggles will be out of the egg and start drinking the mother's milk. By the way, platypuses sweat milk. Who would have guessed that the nipple thing actually had a purpose? Within three to four months, the puggles will become fully grown and waddle out of the burrow, free to explore the world all on their own. The platypus will then live its life eating for around 10 hours a day and sleeping for 14. I don't care what mathematicians say, this is the true golden ratio. And with a rate of 75 dives per hour, each spanning an average of 30 seconds, it spends nearly all of its life munching. 
but as a platypus dives underwater, it closes its eyes, nose, and ears. So how are they able to catch prey? Well, it's because their bill contains 40,000 electroreceptor cells, which are able to sense the electric currents from its moving prey. If you happen to be a crayfish, I recommend not moving, otherwise Ooh. Perry's gonna be on your case. Additionally, it's been recently found that platypus glow in the dark with a color very similar to Perry the platypus. The designer of Perry had no clue this was true. I called it. I called it. In 1947, there were two platypuses in New York. Specifically, they were the only two captive platypuses outside of Australia and had an entire exhibit for themselves within the Bronx Zoo. Now, it just so happens that one of them was a male and the other happened to be a female. You hear that? That's the sound of the zookeepers drooling. The male, named Cecil, would attempt to court the female, named Penelope. But Penelope had no interest in him. And by no interest, I mean she absolutely despised this creature. Are you biting the tail again? You know what, Cecil? Maybe the 88th time is the charm. Or do you just like getting dragged in the water? But it didn't stop at just rejection. In 1951, even being around him would cause Penelope immense amounts of stress, to the point where she would violently scratch herself and roll over. God damn, Cecil, what the fuck did you do? You told her to what? But in the following year, out of complete nowhere, Penelope stopped doing the scratching and rolling thing. She almost seemed to tolerate him. Zookeepers would then observe her bringing leaves into her burrow and eating a concerning amount of food. Could it be? Could it be that Cecil actually got her pregnant? Well, four months later, zookeepers dug through Penelope's burrow and found a whopping zero God. eggs on the premises. This means one of two things. One, something went wrong with the pregnancy. Or two, she faked the whole thing to get more food and to avoid interacting with Cecil. I don't think the hint could have been any more clear. She is not in- And you're already back to doing it. What is wrong with this guy? However, five years later, Penelope suddenly vanished. A 15 person team was sent to find her, but she was nowhere to be seen. It was theorized that she escaped over a fence while running away from Cecil. Now, while Penelope died trying to avoid Cecil, Cecil would have rather died than to be without Penelope. And that's exactly what he did, just one day after the search stopped. Moral of the story, do not send platypuses to America, because they sent three more in 1958 and they died in less than a year. And on a final note, do not search platypus penis on Google. Now that you're ready to look it up, thanks for watching. Well, these things can sting. Well, these things can sting. Well, these things can... Oh my fucking god. My inability to write a script is mind-boggling. The level of inadequacy that I'm facing right now is insurmountable.